Welcome to my lecture online. Now in this example, this is actually set up for a couple of different reasons. We're going to show you what the calculation for the action is for an object that's thrown from an initial, original height of 4.9 meters in a horizontal direction with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. It's still a mass of one kilogram and we can see again that the time in the air will be one second. Now the path of this object will be a parabolic path path of a projectile like this. It will hit the ground some distance away. And here we can see that that is probably the path of least action because that's the path it will take. So by default, we know it should be the path of least action. I know there's been some questions before, say, well, what if the object travels in a straight line like this instead of going around in that particular path? Well, if it does, and we calculate the path of least action, Oh, I should say, the, and we calculate the, the action of the path, we should get a bigger value. Now, that's something we're going to show you in the next several videos. But first, we need to show you this example so we can then show you the next portion of that. So again, uh, the confusion has come in that said, well, if you travel a path like this, doesn't that mean that you'll have a smaller kinetic energy? And you would say, well, on average, you probably will. Hmm then you should have a smaller action. So should that be the path the object takes? Well, let's find out what actually happens. And that's the real beauty of this, this theory, that it should always work no matter what. So again, we need to find the kinetic and potential energies in, in terms of time. So we can plug it into our integral right here. And then to help things along a little bit, I said that the velocity, uh, well, actually, it shouldn't be the velocity initial. The velocity is going to be equal to the square root of the velocity in the x direction plus the velocity in the y direction. Notice in the y direction, v sub naught will be equal to zero. So essentially, it's going to be the velocity in the x direction squared plus the velocity in the y direction squared, which is now a function of time. We take the square root of that, and that gives us the velocity at any point in time. So you can see then that v squared is simply equal to the x term plus the y term squared. In the vertical direction for the potential energy, notice that we can say y is equal to y sub naught, the original height, minus the velocity in the y direction initially times t, but that term will go to zero. And of course, we'll, we still have the minus one half gt squared. Remember that g is equal to a positive 9.8 meters per second squared to make the calculations a little bit easier and to make more sense out of things. Let's plug that into our potential kinetic energy equation. So kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared, which is one half times the mass times v squared will be v in the x direction squared, which always will be the same. The initial velocity in the x direction will remain 10 meters per second all the way through the flight. And then the plus g squared t squared like this. And then the potential energy will be equal to mgh, and in this case, h can be defined as the height initial minus one half gt squared. So notice if g is a positive number, we're subtracting that as the height diminishes. Now let's plug it into our integral. So the action is equal to the integral from zero to one, because again, it's going to take just one second for the object to hit the ground. And then uh, kinetic energy will be one half m times v in the x direction squared plus g squared t squared times dt minus the integral from zero to one for the potential energy, which is mg times h sub naught minus one half g t squared times dt. And that will give us presumably the path of least action. Let's see what that number will be equal to. S is equal to, well, we have one half times the mass, which is one, times the integral of vx squared times t plus g squared t squared divided by uh, three. Oop. Well, no, when we integrate it, it'll be gt cubed over three, evaluated from zero to one, minus m times g, which is one times 9.8 times h sub naught times t minus one half g t cubed over three evaluated from zero to one. And then of course you can see when you plug in the, the lower limits you get nothing so we only worry about the upper limits. So s is equal to one half times v initial in the x direction that's 10 squared that would be 100 
times t, which is 1, plus 9.8 squared times 1 divided by 3 minus 9.8 times h initial, which is 4.9 times 1 minus 1 half times 3, that's 1 6, that's 9.8 times 1 divided by 6. Okay, and let's continue to simplify this. So we have s is equal to 1 half times 100, which is 50, plus 9.8 squared over 6. And then we have minus 9.8 times 4.9. So we get this minus this, and minus times a minus becomes plus. And again, we get 9.8 squared divided by 6. I believe I have two of those. So this becomes 50 plus 9.8 squared divided by 3 when I add the 2 up. So decimal point there. And then minus 9.8 times 4.9. Again, by looking at these graphs here, we understand that we should get a positive value because the kinetic energy on average will be bigger than the potential energy. So S equals, well, let's calculate it now. Where's my calculator? All right, so we end up at 50 plus 9.8 squared divided by 3. And that gives us 82 altogether. Well, let me write that down. That's 82 minus 9.8 times 4.9. So minus 9.8 times 4.9, that is 48 equals, and we get 34. So 34 in the units are joules times seconds. It's energy times time. Here, again, we get a positive value because we start with quite a bit of kinetic energy initially. But again, that should be the lowest number we'll get no matter what path we take. If we start from this location, end up in this location, and we take exactly the same amount of time, one second to get there, regardless what path we take, that number, the action calculated, will be bigger, and we presume that this is the action, uh, the path of least action, because that's the path it actually does take. Makes sense, but now we'll show you in the next couple of examples that if we take a different path, we'll get a different result, which should be bigger than the 34 joules per second. So let's find out. Let's do a couple more examples like that.